wife Melissa we're out at uh, Sandy Hook New Jersey doing she's getting ready for some half marathon she's gonna run this summer so she's out doing nine miles today and being the good husband that I am she asked me to go with her as a little uh, security protection um, not that Sandy Hook isn't isn't safe but as a woman she likes to run you know with somebody and uh, as a as a you know, small female, it's always good to have somebody with you. There's, uh, you know, some sections that are a little secluded and she just feels more safe if I ride. So actually having the one wheel is a nice way to get around and kind of spend some time with her because I'm not a runner. I've got uh, 50 miles logged on my one wheel so far and I'm going to give you some do's and don'ts in today's video as we uh, progress through the nine mile run. So stay tuned for that. We're about four miles in and first tip that I'm going to give to everybody can't stress it enough is understand pushback know what it is and uh, be able being able to identify it so pushback is when the front of the board the nose of the board tilts back on you it's basically telling you that you're exceeding the um, maximum capabilities of that board and you want to slow down you want to slow down immediately um, it can be, it can be, you can get pushed back for a number of reasons. It can be the battery level, it can be the speed, it can be the terrain that you're riding. Uh, all factors will be considered when you get pushed back on the board. And what I can, what I would recommend, like I said, I've got about 50 miles on my board now. And what I would strongly encourage everybody to do is get a good 10, 15 miles on your board and under your feet before you take that board over 10 to 15 miles an hour. Actually, before you take it over 10 miles an hour. Um, I can't stress that enough. Uh, you don't need to be setting any land speed records out there. Um, I can tell you as a 220 pound guy that um, exceeding the, the, the maximum limitations of the board and doing 20 miles an hour on this board, uh, it doesn't give you enough time to react to it if you get pushed back on the board. Um, I'll show you a picture here of the shirt I was wearing when I did a nose dive on the one wheel at doing about 23 miles an hour on this thing. Uh, felt very comfortable with it and um, com too comfortable too soon, I guess. And uh, the tip had just crashed forward on me, just nosedived on me. I'm not sure exactly what happened or why it happened. Uh, but after going online and reading, doing some research, uh, I can't stress enough that being able to identify pushback, which I probably didn't identify it or notice it when it happened, especially going at that speed. Um, uh, can't emphasize it enough. So I'm trying to prevent anybody from having any serious injuries and uh, perhaps learn from uh, some other others that have uh, had this kind of situation themselves. Plenty of other folks out there on YouTube, I've seen it, have uh, hurt themselves seriously uh, more than just some you know road rash. So understand what pushback is very very important, and that's my first tip. itself and that's on a flat surface perfectly flat surface and the the, the bottom of the um, nose of the board is about about five inches uh, we'll say when it's perfectly uh, uh, parallel with the ground so that's not a whole lot of room so it's something to keep in mind now the the one wheel app does show you pitch and a bunch of other you know details about the board when you're riding it um, but I don't find that at all useful the, 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 the font on there on the app is really really small and when you're really you know um, engaged with the board riding you're not gonna be able to sit there and look at your phone and see what your pitch is and 
uh, which basically tells you how far uh, the, the front of the board is tipping forward or, or tipping up. Um, took a tape measure out just to kind of get a general idea of what the clearance was uh, and uh, put that up here. But I also um, tipped the board all the way forward um, and just looked at the app when I was in a perfectly stationary position just to see what the um, angle would be when it touched. Again, on a flat surface, seemed to be about 23 degree pitch. Um, but again, the app you know, gives you all this information, but not, not, ex not extremely helpful when you're riding. Um, something you can certainly look at, but um, just something to be aware of. So getting back to the, uh, the, the earlier conversation I was having with the crash on the board, um, I did come across a product that's manufactured by a third party, not the one wheel manufacturers, but a third party called Fangs, and there's Fangs.2.0, which are basically little wheels that go on the front of the board. So if your tip of the board does touch, um, it's not a dead stop situation, because if that tip touches, and trust me, if you're a bigger guy, even if you're a smaller person, uh, you're just going to come to a dead stop, and it's going to throw you right off the front. Um, if you snowboard, you're probably familiar with that. You know, when you catch an edge, snowboarding. Well, it's kind of a similar situation, uh, but not too pleasant because you're on hard surface conditions. So um, these fangs, I can't. I haven't tried them. I've seen the uh, product online, and um, it looks like a decent product. I've seen some brief videos with some people had tested them at low speeds. Don't know that there's gonna be anyone willing to test it doing 20 miles an hour and see if they actually work. But the product was sold out on the website when uh, I was looking at them, which tells me there's definitely a market for them and people are buying them. Um, even if it saves you um, at lower speeds, let's say, uh, it may be worth looking into. I'm, I may consider them myself. Uh, right now, like I said, they were, um, the product was uh, sold out, but certainly something that's uh, worth considering. If you haven't seen them, I'll put a link below. Fangs 2.0, I guess it was a version 1.0. And uh, they might be worth investigating if you haven't seen them. All right, tip number three I think we're up to is gonna be safety gear. So if you're out riding the one wheel, what you wanna do is make sure you got helmet. I've always had a helmet from day one, strongly recommended, although from day one I did not have the gloves, the elbow pads, and the knee pads. So I'm going to put a link to that below if you want to check out the ones that I have. Um, they seem like a pretty good brand. They've got the uh, guards in the front for your palms, knee pads, um, their Velcro on the sides, elbow pads, and um, strongly recommend them to anybody that's going to take the one wheel out for a spin and especially if you're going to be um, doing a lot of riding. So safety gear, make sure you get it. Google, I mean I'll tell you real quick, it wasn't until after I did a nose dive on my one wheel that I started Googling nose dives. If you Google one wheel nose dives, you're gonna see some stuff out there and I didn't wanna post it in my videos. Um, it can be pretty pretty gruesome images. Um, some guys that have, have you know really hurt themselves and some guys ended up in the hospital. I don't wanna see anybody uh, get hurt. So uh, take it seriously, have some safety gear and at the absolute minimum, you should be uh, wearing a helmet. So I can see the scratches on my helmet uh, for where, where, I took a, where I took a hit. And um, thank goodness it was only some road rash. So uh, that's tip number three. All right, Melissa's crushing it. We're about five and a half miles in. And let me see. Uh, oh, so this is just a picture image from the uh, shirt that I was wearing when I had the wipeout. Um, the shirt, you can see, got all shredded along the back. Didn't offer much protection, but I'm glad I had it on me. Um, at least it gave me some protection, more than I would have had, obviously, without it. So I may look into, if I'm gonna be like riding this thing a lot and doing, doing a lot of miles, I may even look into some, um, I heard like BMX bikes might have some shoulder padding built into it. Because I, when I fell, and if you snowboard or, you know, I don't know, skateboard's the same, I don't skateboard. Uh, when I fell, I, I actually felt pretty good. I felt, I felt the way that I think I probably sustained the least amount of injuries. Um, I kind of felt, come, came down on my shoulder, my left shoulder. 
um, which took the brunt of the impact, which was got, which was good because I got some nice, I got some meat on that shoulder. Um, came down on my, you know, side of my elbow a little bit, and um, obviously banged my knee up a little bit. Came down on the left side of the helmet, but um, yeah, I think had I fall, had I, had I fallen straight forward, I probably would have done a lot more damage. So I'm kind of think I fell probably the best way possible, kind of rolled a little bit coming down on that shoulder so I think that kind of saved me a little bit but yeah if, if you if you guys don't think I'm serious about what what uh, damage this this thing can do when you're really maxing this thing out take a look at this shirt because it's no joke I'm not trying to scare people not in not trying to scare people into not buying the one wheel it's it's tons of fun um, I don't want this video to be you know negative it's not meant to be that at all I, I love the one wheel it's tons of fun gives me and Melissa a chance to kind of hang out a little bit of, to, to, uh, together because like I said I'm not a runner uh, but I do enjoy going out with her as well. And I'm not really into bike riding, uh, but this is a ton of fun and it's probably the closest thing to snowboarding in the, sum in the summer. So yeah, um, take it seriously. Uh, it's no joke, but it is a ton of fun. So I do want to keep this video positive and upbeat and um, uh, you will enjoy the one wheel. I just want to make some strong suggestions to people, and I know some people uh, may ignore me, some people may pay attention. I hope I could just, you know, help a few folks out and they listen um, and see this video before they um, uh, take it out and, and, and go too fast, faster than what the, the board can actually support. Like I said, I'm looking at my one wheel app, and um, from what I can tell, I had that board up to 23, I think 23 or 24.8 miles per hour, way above what it should have been. Uh, wasn't deliberate, but I hadn't had enough miles under my belt yet to really understand the limitations of the board, and especially being a bigger guy uh, at 220, I think the speed limitations uh, are much more restrictive than someone that might be 120, 140 pounds. You may be able to get away with a little more speed, so just something to keep in mind. All right, another recommendation, um, and this one's based on information that I'm getting from uh, one wheel riders with the, a lot more experience than I have on the board, and from what I'm reading online, what I'm seeing in the, some of the YouTube videos, what I'm reading in comments, is regarding the digital shaping uh, settings. You have a bunch of different digital shaping uh, settings on the one wheel, and what seems to be the most highly recommended at any level is either setting your board to mission mode or delirium mode. All right, and my next tip. How far are we, my pumpkin? Oh, almost seven. Almost seven miles in now. Melissa's doing really good. Uh, my next tip for you is don't exceed 15 miles an hour. I don't think you really need to set any land speed records. Uh, the board's capable of going much faster, as I mentioned previously. Um, but I would strongly recommend keeping it under 15. You do that and you're going to prevent yourself a lot of heartache and injuries down the road and you're going to enjoy yourself a lot more. All right, so next tip for you guys is going to be stay centered over the board. Stay straight up and down. You don't want to find yourself leaning forward, tilting forward, or even leaning back. Stay directly over the center of the board and you're going to have a much better experience as well. All right, next tip, a recommendation would be be careful when you're accelerating uphill, um, particularly because the nose of the board is going to be closer to the uh, ground as you're going up a hill. So you're, the distance, that four or five inch distance that you would normally have on a flat surface is reduced and you're going to have less clearance between your board, the front of that board, and the ground. So something to keep in mind as well, be particularly um, aware of the nose of the board when you're accelerating up a hill. Another tip that you won't hear anywhere else, but I'll give it to you right here exclusively on RGMG Fitness. Um, if you're riding your board on the beach, I took it out the other day and I was down at uh, Wildwood. I was having a great time on the beach. The, the sand down there is really packed, so it's actually perfect conditions to ride the one wheel on. Uh, be real, real careful for sinkholes. Um, if somebody dug a hole, you know, kids typically dig holes in the in the you know sand down at the beach um, and then the the grader you know the service that comes around in the morning the grades the sand makes everything nice and flat for you um, I think went over the sand everything looked nice and smooth and I guess with the one wheel because all the pressures on the single tire at one point hit a 
little sinkhole. I'm called a sinkhole, but it was you know probably a hole that someone had dug out previously. But it looked perfectly flat, and it just dropped. It just dropped into the hole and off the front of the board I went on sand. So not a big deal, but certainly something that um, happened to me. So. Maybe it happened to somebody else somewhere too. So something to be aware of. The sand may look flat, uh, but it's definitely something that, that um, you might want to be aware of as you're riding. Um, there's a really cool bridge over here. I think I'm going to go check that out. Um, if I didn't say it, have fun on the one wheel. I didn't mean to um, make this video sound like a lecture or anything, but uh, have a good time. Enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy taking the one wheel out um, and, like I said, a ride like this at, down, by the, down by the ocean, uh, across these piers and stuff. Really, really nice. Have yourself a good time. It's a blast. I want everybody to be safe and enjoy themselves. Uh, if you're new to the channel, um, and you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll be doing more Mavic Air uh, footage. And uh, I actually, I heard from DJI the other day, uh, I might be getting my hands on a, a Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, don't cross my fingers, I'm not sure if that's um, a guarantee yet. But something that's in the works, and I might be able to get my, help, my hands on one. Something to be aware of. Um, Thank you for watching. Give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. I'd appreciate it. Go a little off-road here on the grass. Um, don't forget, uh, like, subscribe, ring that bell. And if you're an active subscriber, I thank you. If you're not an active subscriber, please think about subscribing. I got some really good videos coming up. I got one in the works. I'm gonna try to get published in the next day or two. Got some really great uh, Mavic Air footage. I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos with that as well, but I definitely want to get this, this video out with the regarding the one wheel because there is, is some safety concerns out there and I want everybody to be safe and have a good time. Having a blast with my one wheel. Until next time, good seeing you guys. Take care and uh, see you in the next video. Back to my history, into my home.